It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I'm willing to give it 100%. I don't do things by halves. I wouldn't be here if I, if I didn't think I could win it. This is one tough competition. I want to win this more than anything else in the world. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six amateur cooks all want to become a top chef. But only one will get through to the quarter-final. I want somebody to cook with food and ingredients they understand and they know go together. It's difficult, it should be difficult. This is MasterChef. One plate of food. At the end of this, three of you are going home. You have 50 minutes to do it in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of today's ingredients, which include chicken breast, streaky bacon, prawns, paella rice, little gem lettuce, goat's cheese, lemons, courgette, parsley, mint, and cherry tomatoes. 31-year-old accountant Such's cooking is influenced by her heritage. My style of food, I would say, is fusion. Growing up in Malaysia, I think I got exposed to lots and lots of different types of cuisine. Do you have a good, firm idea of what you're going to cook for us? I'm going to keep the prawns quite simple, so I've just marinated it with some basil and coriander. Basil and coriander? Yes. You mean mint and parsley? No. <laughs> IT project manager Hugh wants to combine his two loves, cooking and surfing. What's your ultimate dream here? There'd be a seafood restaurant, I think. I like doing just fresh fish dishes and that sort of stuff. It's not only because of the seafood restaurant, but it gives you a chance to surf, is that right? I'll do the evening service so I can surf all day. I live right by the sea and my love of the sea definitely influences my cooking. As much as I love my job, I do find it quite emotionally draining and I find cooking very relaxing. How fab would it be to do that and get paid for it as your job, you know? Have you thought properly about what you're going to cook today for us? It's kind of a, a work in progress as I'm going along. I don't tend to measure things, I tend to taste things, so I'm going to put things in and if it doesn't taste right, add a bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, you are... Halfway. Train mechanic Graham has had a passion for cooking from an early age. It's school where everybody was kicking a football around. I just wanted to be in the domestic science class. I was from a mining community and that opportunity was never there for me. I believe I can do it now. You did look a little bit nervous when we started. I think it's just general nerves. Because I've got that adrenaline inside me, I'm absolutely shaking at the minute. Ladies and gentlemen, you have 15 minutes left. 15 minutes. My job is to be exceptionally organised and exceptionally bossy, and I would love to use the skills to organise my life to go in more of a cooking direction. How far in this competition do you think you can go, Verity? Not all the way. You are a very confident girl, aren't you? I'm more confident when I'm in the kitchen than anywhere else. Good well luck. done, Verity. 34-year-old sales consultant Andy has only been cooking three years, but already he wants to make it more than just a hobby. I've got a passion for cooking, not entirely content in, in my um, work life at the minute. Looking at the future, really, and, and looking at what I, want, what I want to do next, really. What are you going to cook for us today? Just quite a simple um, dish of prawns, pancetta, cooked in uh, onions. Maybe playing it a little bit safe, but hopefully it's tasty enough, you'll love it, and, and that's enough. You've only got three minutes. Time's up.
After confusing the herbs, will fusion cook Such redeem herself with pan-fried prawns in a parsley mint and cream sauce? I quite like the idea of the flavour of the mint and the prawns together. Uh, I don't believe that prawns and cream sit very happily. I'm worried that you mistook parsley for coriander. I'm worried you mistook mint for basil. I don't really know what to make of you, to be honest. OK. Despite his nerves, Graham hopes his passion for cooking will show in his bacon-wrapped chicken stuffed with goat's cheese, served on creamy leeks and mash. The leeks are soft and cooked well. Your chicken is very, very moist. Your mashed potato is lump-free and seasoned. Not bad, Graham. Classic combination, bacon, chicken, cream leeks, mashed potato. I think it shows the sign of somebody who is really thinking about their food. Novice cook Andy has made spicy prawns with tomatoes and pancetta served on lettuce. Nice sweet prawn flavour, heavy salty bacon and a whack of chilli. But I'm struggling to see that you can do more than put ingredients in a pan and stir them. The flavour of that half-cooked lettuce from the onions and the bacon is really, really unpleasant. I don't think it's very well thought out um, and I don't like it. Account manager Verity has made a lemon tart and cream. The metal casing is still on the outside. Yeah. Your lovely lemon custard has basically cemented your tart pastry inside your tart case. The filling is soft, it is well flavoured, it's well made. Your pastry actually is quite crumbly. But the fact remains, Verity, it ain't quite worked, has it? It hasn't, no. I don't think you are far away from a very good lemon tart. Welfare officer Jane has made goat's cheese risotto with chicken, tomatoes, bacon, courgette and onion. I think you've cooked everything very, very well. But there is a lot of stuff in there for a risotto. Yeah. You know, it's not a disaster, but there's just far too much in there, Jane. Seafood enthusiast Hugh has made garlic and chilli prawns with warm courgette salsa served on lettuce. It's well cooked. I really like the flavours of your prawns, and I, th I like the flavour of that courgette and the tomato with the prawns. It's all perfectly edible, but it's very difficult to tell how good a cook you are from that. We have six cooks and six plates of food to discuss, so off you go. I have to say, I don't think there was a lot of great cooking, but I know there's potential. Graham put a lot of work in here today, more work than anybody else in the room. Made good mashed potato, cooked that chicken perfectly. Cream leeks, stuffed the chicken, wrapped it in bacon. It was well thought out. I think it's a pretty good show. Graham staying. I just wanted to show the judges that I sure could show enough core skills today and hopefully prove that I can move on in Master Chef. I think Andy's a terrible cook. Those prawns in some onions and some bacon with a bit of spice in them, served on warm lettuce. No, nah, not at all. Andy just hasn't been cooking long enough, that's obvious. Andy's gone. I like Verity. Pastry was good, filling was good. I think the lady's got skill. It just couldn't come out of the case, but I think she's a good cook. You can see bags of promise there. Verity's in. We've got two in. We've got Verity and we've got Graham. Such mistook parsley for coriander and mint for basil. 
John, you know, if I'd stayed in the pub for 12 hours, I still wouldn't mistake parsley for coriander or basil for mint. Even if it was basil and coriander, mixed with cream as a cream sauce, pureed together, it's just not enough. That leaves us a discussion between Hugh and Jane. Inside this risotto, we had chicken, bacon, parsley, goat's cheese, roast tomatoes, and onions. This is sticking in a pot, stir it around, fingers crossed cooking. But the chicken is actually perfectly moist. The bacon was crispy. These were all done properly. I'd really like to get through to the next round. I hope that I've proved to them that, um, that I can cook. With Hugh, his prawns were cooked well. I quite like that sweet tomato sauce against the saltiness of the prawns and the big amount of garlic he had with those prawns. Hugh's food, actually, you could eat it yeah. and you would probably eat the whole plate and think, OK, well, you know, not a great dish, but not inedible. I don't think Hugh did enough, John, with his 50 minutes. Jane attempted a lot more. I hope I show them that I've, uh, I've got... I know what I'm doing and, uh, and I can hopefully get a chance to cook again for them. Who is it going to be from those two? You know the rules. Three of you stay and three of you go home. Graham, we want to see you cook some more, Graham. You're staying with us. Well done. Cheers. Search. And Andy, I'm afraid you two are leaving us. Verity, you're staying, Verity. Hugh or Jane? Jane, I'm afraid you're leaving us. Congratulations, Hugh. I'm feeling absolutely over the moon. Stoked. Really excited. It was so amazing to get through. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> absolutely overjoyed. My heart's thumping and the adrenaline's going and I want to hopefully carry on tomorrow and show even more. We have our three amateur cooks and tomorrow they're going to their first ever professional kitchen. A baptism of fire. You have to step up the whole level of intensity and quality to survive a professional kitchen. Day two, and the contestants arrive at The Zetta, a restaurant serving modern Mediterranean cuisine in Clerkenwell, London. The contestants will be working under head chef Diego Jacquet. It's going to be a tough service today. We have fully booked restaurant. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go. After two hours of prep, the 12 o'clock lunchtime rush begins. Order in North Star to one cod, land medium rare, and two prawns. Yes, chef! Graham is responsible for the restaurant's signature starter, garlic roasted prawns with chorizo, sweet potato, and glazed pork belly. Immediately, he's thrown in at the deep end. One needs to be in two minutes, the other one needs to be no more than four minutes, and then you have two new ones. It's got to be very quick. Come on. Shaking like a leaf. Oh, it's just a nightmare. I'm just the pressure's too much at the moment. With Graham losing his nerve, Diego has to step in. Yeah. You can do it. So stop shaking. Two lamb, one medium, one medium rare, and a cod. Yes, chef. Verity is making char-grilled English lamb with summer bean yogurt and salsa verde. But first, she's got to master the grill. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, Verity. You got exactly 30 seconds to give me that lamb. She completes her first plates, but will they please Diego? What is that? Um, that's medium, and this one's the well-done one. This doesn't look right. It's dirty, it's not nice. 
That's not good. You need to play it again. Come on, go That's back. That's medium. Yes. Come on. Four chords, one land, medium rare. Yes, chef. Seafood enthusiast Hugh should be in his element making roast cod with Jersey Royal potatoes and a crayfish and dill salsa. But with four orders, he's under pressure. Get your hands in the pan. Come on, come on. Look nice, it's well cooked. Just try to be a little bit more delicate with your lips. With just a few minor tweaks, his four cod go out. Nice. Put four cod to go out at the same time. Uh, Diego was pretty happy, so yeah, I'm pleased. It's 1.30 and the orders are still flooding in. A lamb, medium rare, and a cod. You know what you're doing? Yeah. At the grill, Verity's thriving, turning out plates of perfect lamb. One lamb. They look very nice. Huh? I think they've gone out quite well. I think I'm coping okay with the pressure. And Hugh's also excelling under the pressure. Perfect. Two prawns. With service almost over, can Graham finally get his nerves under control? It's important to try and get these two dishes right for, for Chef. Otherwise, he's not going to be a happy man. It's looking good. Are you sure? Yes, Chef. Finally, Graham manages to get his plates out on time. After a hectic service, what did head chef Diego think of the contestants? Graham was very, very nervous. He was shaking a lot badly. But at least he, he managed to go through the service, and that was the most important thing. The nerves just got to me. You know, I just wasn't quick enough. He did very good. The last one was absolutely perfect. I mean, it was beautiful, dish, honestly. I was just over the moon. I think that, you know, that really made my day, to be honest. Very dish. She did very well. The dish was not played properly, but nothing major. The only mistake was that one of the plates was a little messy, and so I had to replate up. If I need to hire one of these guys, I will hire him. We have one quarter-final place up for grabs here. You have one hour. Let's cook. Yesterday, Hugh scraped through the invention test with his prawn dish, but excelled in the pro kitchen. Can his two courses secure him victory? Hugh, tell us about your dishes. pan fried fillet of salmon, a Bernays sauce, and then to follow that, I'm doing a shortbread stack with some strawberries and some whipped vanilla cream. Do you think you're up for winning MasterChef? To change my career and have a career in food would be a, an ultimate dream. And, uh, and if I can do that, then that would be just awesome. I don't quite like his menu. They must be perfectly cooked and they must be absolutely delicious. Can he do that? In the first round, the flavours of Verity's lemon tart impressed and she coped well in the pro kitchen. Can she now cook two fault-free courses to get through? What are you going to prepare for us? Chicken, coriander and spring onion pesto. Uh, my dessert is a, um, I've called it a blueberry love nest. It's blueberries um, roasted in rose water with meringue, chocolate truffle and vanilla and raspberry cream. You have a lot of work to do here. I'm exceptionally organised, so I've been able to sort of translate that into cooking. Raspberries, blueberries, rose water, chocolate and meringue. Come on. Now, I'm actually really, really looking forward to it. You have 20 minutes left. Train mechanic Graham wowed the judges yesterday with his chicken and leek dish, but his nerves have been a problem throughout. Can he now conquer them and turn out his two courses of halibut and a pear and amaretto flan? What's happening to your nerves, Graham? I don't know. I don't know, because I'm not normally like this. Do you think that, actually, your nerves today will affect the way your food comes out? Possibly. I was nervous yesterday, but I managed to pull, pull it off in the end, I thought. How much would you like to win this? From the, look, the size of me, I'm putting every, all of it into it. If I can get around the nerves, yeah, I think I can pull it off. Mm, I do like the sound of Graham's food. He phoned my mum first before he came on here, because that is delicious. You've got just two minutes. That's all you've got. Get it on the plate now.
Time's up. That's it. Hugh has made pan-fried salmon with asparagus, new potatoes and Bernays sauce, followed by shortbread biscuit stack with strawberry coulis and vanilla cream. The fish is actually overcooked. I've been pan-frying fish all day. This one is the only one I've burnt all day. Fish is your love. I am, I know. I'm kicking myself. Asparagus and Bernays, classic combination. Works beautifully. And you brought all those flavours together to make a really tasty dish until you get that dry salmon in your mouth, which makes it a bit sandy. I like the subtle tarragon of that Bernays. I like the buttery potato. But uh, your salmon is dry, overcooked and it's spoiling the texture. Right. Let's bring in the pudding. Beautiful buttery shortbread. Delicious, not too sweet, vanilla rich cream. It's really, really very, very good indeed. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. How do you rate your chances? It's making the hairs on my neck stand up just to your comments, you know. I really want to come and cook for you guys, and I just hope I can do some more. Verity has gone all out to impress with chicken with coriander pesto and a courgette leek and sun-dried tomato sandwich, followed by a blueberry meringue love nest with chocolate truffle and vanilla and raspberry cream. I think you've cooked everything very, very well. Mm -hmm. Your flavours are confusing. Right. You have Mediterranean sun-dried tomato, you have coriander and Eastern flavouring yeah. herb, and they are clashing. Right. Everything is cooked well. I feel like we've got two completely different dishes mm -hmm. on one plate. Let's have a look at this pudding. I like the chocolate. I like the sharp sweetness of the raspberry. I really want to pick up rose water. Mm. I would like to see you consider two or three less flavourings yeah. when you cook. Yeah. The sharpness of those um, raspberries with the depth of the cocoa and the chocolate against the sweetness and the, the fragrance of the rose water and the blueberries, mm -hmm. to me, is just a little bit too much. Maybe I could have toned it down a bit. Graham has made halibut with prawn, chorizo and cannellini bean broth, followed by pear, frangipan and amaretto flan. I like the flavours of the tomato, the halibut, the prawns together with those spring onions. I like the texture of the beans. I think it needs to have more body, more spice. I love the texture of the beans. I love the flavours. But it needs a bit of chilli mm -hmm. heat or it needs some tomato sweetness. Yeah. You are so, so close. From fish to tart. Your pears are delicious, deliciously soft, and then we've got a lovely warmth of the amaretto booze in there. The pastry is lovely and soft and crumbly. It's an elegant looking dish. Thank you. There are some things in life that are just an absolute joy, Graham, and uh, this is just superb. The combination is just stunning, mate. From what you, the comments you've just said, it's just blown us away.
where you're going to sit on the sofa and hopefully make a decision as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. I like the style of the cooking in this room today. It's fair to say that nobody actually raced ahead here. We take Verity. The chicken was cooked to perfection. I think she made a very good pesto. Technically, it's all very good, flavour-wise. I mean, it just was never going to work. The strength of the coriander against those otherwise Mediterranean flavours was just wrong. Her dessert was, again, totally confused with flavours. The idea of the blueberries, the rose water, the meringue, the cream, the raspberries and the chocolate, it's just too much. There is a question mark over her palate. I think that, actually, the other two boys cooked far, far better. Big Graham. The halibut, the beans, chorizo. Very good idea. Almost a great dish. It needed more depth, more chorizo, more paprika, more spice. Made a lovely tart. Boy, it tasted good. I mean, he got the textures absolutely right. But the guy is just in a virtual state of nervous exhaustion all the time. To even get through to the next round and hopefully even carry on after that, I wanted so much. I think my emotions in there said it all. Hugh, today he did good Bernays. The idea of the asparagus, the potatoes and the Bernays and salmon, of course it will work. I really like the flavour combination, but he destroyed that poor salmon. But actually, his, his strawberry uh, and his biscuit cream and I thought it was lovely. It had good flavour, lovely buttery shortbread, vanilla cream, a little bit of coolie on the side. Very, very good indeed. I would love to go through to the next round of the competition. I think um, if, I can, if I can come back, I'll do even better. We've got very nervous Graham and we've got Hugh. Who's it going to be, Mr Wallace? Finalist. It's Graham. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Yes. We made up for you. <laughs> Try not to get emotional now. <laughs> I'm obviously disappointed. I, you know, I wanted to carry on the competition, but um, it wasn't to be. I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get through. I'm definitely going to carry on cooking. Um, whether I can take that to a professional level, I'm not sure. We'll have to see. My heart's thumping. Absolutely thumping. And I can't wait to tell my family and friends. Great. Great day. Yes! Yes! Graham will be back for the quarter-final, where he'll face three other exceptional cooks.